what we're going to be building is an AI NFT generator. We're going to be using OpenAI to generate these images using Dolly. And we're going to be using Engine by ThirdWeb to mint these NFTs of the images that are generated for us. So this is my application here. We have a simple connect screen here. So I'm going to connect my MetaMask wallet here. And you can see here we have uh, our image generator, which we have no image generated. We have a little prompt here and then we have a button to generate and mint the image. And here is some collection of images that I have already generated and minted as NFTs. And if we come to the contract here, you can see that these are all the NFTs here that have been minted, which are the same NFTs as these ones right over here. And how it works is you would put in a prompt to generate an image. So this can be anything. So let's just say um, a robot turtle in the ocean with neon lights. I don't know, something random. And what we'll do here is we will generate and mint. And what this will do is first generate the image using OpenAI's Dolly. And once the image has been generated, we should see the image appear here. There we go. And once the image is generated, you'll see it is minting. So it mints the NFT using engine. You can see the NFT has minted successfully. And that is the NFT that was generated for us and then minted using third web's engine and then we can generate another nft here if we want to but if we come back to our contract here you can see here that this is the newest image that was generated for us which is the image that we generated right over here again we can generate another one if we want to and then down here at the bottom you'll see that the image gets added to our uh, already generated collection of nfts Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another video and in today's tutorial video, we're going to be building our very own AI NFT generator. We'll be building this using OpenAI's Dolly to generate the AI images and then we'll be using ThirdWeb's engine to go ahead and mint those images generated as NFTs. An overview of what we're going to be going over in this video, we'll first deploy ourselves our NFT smart contract, which we are going to mint our NFTs to. Then we'll build out our front end application where we'll implement OpenAI's Dolly image generator to generate some images. And then we'll use Engine, which is an HTTP server, which allows us to call on chain transactions. And we'll use these two things hand in hand to generate AI images and mint them as NFTs. So with all of that being said, let's jump on the computer here and let's first deploy out our NFT smart contract. So here on my computer, I am connected to ThirdWeb's dashboard. I'm going to come over to the contracts tab here and I'm going to hit deploy a contract. Now we're going to deploy ourselves an ERC721 smart contract here, and I'm going to come down into the NFT section and the contract that I'm going to select to deploy is going to be the NFT collection here. And with the NFT collection selected, I'm going to hit deploy now and we're going to name this contract. So I'm going to call this AI NFT generator. Uh, we can add a symbol if we want to a description image to the contract. You can fill out all the contract metadata here how you want. And you can fill out the remainder of the contract parameters here as well. Down at the bottom here under network and chain, you're going to select the drop down menu here. And we support any EVM compatible blockchain with third web. So you can choose any mainnet test net. You can search the network name, search the chain ID and select the network that you want to deploy to. For this tutorial here, I'm going to just choose the Sepolia test net here. Switch my network here. You can see I selected Sepolia and then I'm going to select deploy now. This will then open up a transaction window here and this is to deploy our contract. So we're just going to have to pay for the gas to do that. Then we'll get another pop up here for a signature request. Uh, we'll go down here, sign this. This is to add it to our third web dashboard. And once this adds to our third web dashboard, you'll be able to view your contract dashboard itself. And we'll take a quick look through that before continuing on. So there you go. It has been successfully deployed. This is our AI NFT generator. Right now, we don't have any NFTs or anything minted to it. And that's all we need to do with this contract for now. Uh, we are going to have to come back and get the contract address when we start building out our app. And once we set up engine and everything, we'll have to come back in here and set up the permissions for this smart contract. But with that contract being deployed, we can now build out our front end application. So the next thing we're going to do is start building out our front end app here. I'm going to come over to my terminal and in my terminal, I'm going to create a new next project here. So I'm going to uh, run NPX create next app and we're just going to call this AI NFT generator. 
And I'm gonna say yes to TypeScript, no to ESLint, no to Tailwind, yes to source directory, and yes to app router. You can of course configure your next project how you want to. Once that's created here, let's just click this. Let's change into our project here. So AI NFT generator. And we're gonna install a few things. The first thing we're gonna install is ThirdWeb's Connect SDK. And you can do this by running npm install third web. We support yarn, pmpm, and bun as well. So whatever you're using, you can go ahead and install third web. I'm just going to use yarn here and run yarn add third web. Once that is installed, we also need to install OpenAI. So you can go ahead and install OpenAI as well. I'm going to be running yarn add OpenAI. And once that is done, we are going to then open this up in our code editor. And in our code editor, we just need to set up our third web SDK first. So in the source folder, uh, in the app folder within that, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this file client.ts. And we're going to create our third web client here using our third web API key. So I'm going to create a variable here and we're going to call this variable our client ID. And we are going to store this client ID in our .env file. So we're going to say process.env dot uh, next public client id and then we're going to create that dot env file for our environment variable here i'm coming back to my file directory i'm going to create a new file i'm going to say dot env and i am going to then get to the next public client id variable and we're going to get our client id from our third web api key so to get your third web api key here you come back to the third web dashboard. You're going to go under the settings tab. And in the settings tab here, you have your API keys. You can create an API key. If you don't already have one, you want to watch a more detailed video on creating API keys. We'll link that down in the description below. You can check that out. I already have an API key here created. So I'm just going to copy my client ID, come back here to my .env file and paste my client ID in there. Now we can create our client here with third web. So I'm going to export this variable here called client. And we are going to use the create third web client here. We'll make sure we import that in from third web. And for creating our client, we need to provide it then with our client ID, which will be our client ID variable here. Uh, we'll just make sure that this is as a string. And there you go. We now have created our client that we can use throughout our web three application here. Next thing we need to do is we have to wrap our application with something called the third web provider to make sure that our project here works with the connect SDK. So coming back to my files here, I'm going to come over to the layout.tsx page. And all we're going to do is wrap the children here with the third web provider. So I'm just going to come here and say third web, oops, third web provider. And we are going to make sure that the children here are wrapped within the third web provider. We'll then make sure that we import our third web provider. So say import third web provider from third web slash uh, react. And we'll save that again, making sure that our children are wrapped there. And then we can run this locally on our device here. So I'm just going to run yarn dev. And we're going to run this project here and we're going to see, make sure everything is working properly. This should load the next JS template here, the starter project that it comes with. So we'll give it a second. There you go. You can see it loads the next JS template here. And now we can start building out our application. So the first thing we want to do is just build out our application here. Let's take a look at our demo. So we take a look at our demo here. The first thing we want to do is build out a way for us to connect our wallet or for a user to connect a wallet to our application here. So I'm going to come back here to my code editor. We're going to come over to the page.tsx file. And in here, I'm going to select all this templated code here from Next.js. And we're going to remove that and replace it with some empty divs here. Remove those imports. And we're going to just create our application here. So I'm just going to give this a h1 header here. Call this our AI NFT generator. And then I'm going to give this some styling in here just to center our text. And what I'm going to do here is then create a way to create a way for a user to connect their wallet to our app. And we have a couple components here that you can use. You can either use the connect button or you can use the connect embed. 
connect button is going to be a button UI component that when you click it, will then open up a connect modal. The connect embed is just going to display, display you the connect modal itself. So we're going to use the connect embed here. And right here, all we need to do is provide our connect embed with the client that we created in our client.ts file. So once we have that added, we come back to our app here. You can see we have our title, AI NFT generator, and we have our connect embed, which is this connect modal right over here. We can connect with our in-app wallet, which is social login, email, or phone number, or we can select a Web3 wallet here, and we now support over 350 Web3 wallets. You can just search the name and search the wallet that you're looking to connect right in there. So now we have a way to connect our wallet to the application uh, and we need a wallet connected because again we need to be able to send the nft somewhere so next let's create the actual application that we can start generating our nfts so coming to back to my code editor i'm going to come into my file directory i'm going to create a new folder here i'm going to call this components and in the components folder i am going to create a new file here and i am going to call this our ai generator tsx and in here we're going to create our ai generator component and the first thing we want to display in this component uh, once someone is connected with a wallet is a way to disconnect their wallet or view the information of their wallet and we can show them this by showing them our connect button now it's not going to show them the actual button to connect to an application it'll just show them the connected state of this button and again, we just need to provide this with our client here from our client.ts file. And then we can add some styling here to our div. So if we come back to our app here, and now let's connect the wallet to our application. Once we're connected, you'll see you don't see the modal anymore. And what we should see is our connect button, but we forgot to add this component here to our page.tsx file. So we're going to add our AI generator component here save that come back and then we should see a connected button here we can come here disconnect our wallet it brings us back to the main login screen here but you can see that we still see the connect button down here now we only want to see the modal here and once we're connected with the connect embed we should only see the button here so technically we should only display this button if there is a wallet connected and we can actually check that so in our ai generator.tsx we're going to create a variable here called account and we're going to use the use active account hook here and what this is going to do is retrieve the information of the connected wallet or account that we have connected to our application and if we don't have anything it just returns us back undefined so we can say here if there is an account then we should return our app here so we'll just take uh, this right here and paste that in right over here and there you go, only if we have an account or wallet connected should we display that connect button. So now coming back here to our application, uh, looks like um, only works in a client component. We forgot to come back to our AI generator and we need to tag this at the top with something called use client. There you go. So let that reload, there you go. So when we're connected, we see our connect button when we disconnect we only see the connect embed modal here no connect button down here anymore once we're connected though we'll see our connect button so now we have a way for a user to connect a wallet or sign in and then disconnect and sign out as well so now that we have that again we need that because we need to know what wallet we want to send the nft to we can now create our actual application here now we're just going to create and build the actual generator itself first uh, so this little area here where we can see our image, our prompt area, and a button right down here. So coming back to our demo app and then coming back to our code editor, we're going to build that out first. Right here, I'm going to add some state variables and make sure we import use state here. And these state variables are going to be for our input fields when generating the image. Uh, one right here is for our image prompt. The other one here is for our generated image. So once an image is generated, this is where we're going to store a generated image. And then some state variables here for saying if we are generating or if we are minting the NFT, that way we can prompt certain text and we can set the generated images and everything accordingly. So the image prompt and the generated image are gonna start off both as default in blank strings. 
and the is generating and is minting state is going to be a default of false here. So we're going to come down here and below our connect button, we're going to create a div. And in this div, we're going to say if there is a generated image. So if there is a image generated, then we're going to show that generated image. And if there is no image generated, then we're going to show that empty box um, where it's going to say, hey, generate an image. So we're just going to give this div here some styling of margins. And if there is an image generated, we're going to use a component here from Third Web called the Media Renderer. And this is going to be able to render out uh, an image for us, whether we have it as an IPFS hash or if we just need to render out an image in our application. And what we need to do is provide it here with a client, which we can provide it with our client from our client.ts file. Uh, the source here is going to be our generated image. So once we generate the image, we set it as our generated image variable, which is this one right here. And that's what we're going to display uh, once we have a generated image. And then we'll just give this here uh, some styling of width, height, and a border radius. Now, if we don't have an image generated, uh, that's where we're just going to show our empty div here with some text inside. And this text, depending if we are generating an image or not, so we'll say is generating, we'll show generating. And if not, we'll say enter prompt to generate an image. So that is what the text is going to say on our empty state. And then we'll just give this some styling here. And then we'll give the div some styling here to make it uh, like a box that displays. So we should see this here because there's no image generated. So if we come back to our application here. You should see here we have our div here that says enter prompt to generate image, just a dashed box of our div here. Now we need to add in our form here that we can fill out the prompt of the image that we want to generate and then a button there that we're going to use to generate and mint our NFT. So coming back here below this div here, we're going to create another div and this div is going to be for our form that we're going to fill out to again, generate the image. So in the form here, we're going to say if we are not, if we don't have a generated image or if there is an NFT minting, we're going to display our form. Uh, but if there is a generated image and our NFT is not minting, then we will display our button to reset the prompt and everything. So in here, we're going to create uh, our form and mint button. And here we're going to have a button that resets the image generation. So right here in the first section, we're going to create our form to generate our image here. So we're going to give this uh, div here some styling. And first thing we're going to do is create an input field here for us to enter the text for our image that we want to generate. The placeholder here will just say enter a prompt. The value here is going to be our image prompt. And then on change, we set the image prompt to the value of our input here. And then we give the input some styling. And then below that, we are going to have a button and that button is going to have a different text. So if we are is generating, it is going to say that we are generating the image. So we'll say uh, generating. If we are is minting, we'll have the minting state. And then if not, it'll just say generate uh, and mint NFT, right? So we save that, we come back here. You can see we have our prompt area where we're gonna put in our prompt for OpenAI's Dolly to generate our image. And then we have a button here that we are going to click to generate our image. So coming back here, we are going to say on our button here, type is going to be our submit. It's gonna take our form and then we're going to submit the prompt here that we have. The button is disabled if we are generating or minting or if there is no image prompt. We only wanna generate the image if we have an image prompt itself. And then we have some styling for our button right over here. So coming right here, you can see we now can generate our MT. We just have our prompt right in here. And down here, this is where once the image is generated and everything, we are just going to display a button here that says uh, generate another NFT. And all this button is going to do here is we'll say on click, 
and what this will do is just set generated image back to a blank string and it will then set everything back to this input field and button up here. Again, we can just give that the same styling here and there we go. So if we take a look at our app, again, we have our prompt field, our button. Once we click that and generate our image, we'll get be prompted a, another button here that shows us. So if we actually come back here um, to our code editor and I'll say if there, say if there uh, is a generated image, so we'll just come back here. You can see here it says generate another NFT and then when we click that it will reset the prompt to not having a prompt and we can then enter our prompt in to generate another NFT. We'll say back here, we'll just say not generated. There we go. All right, and if we take a look at our demo app here, the next thing we want to do below that is display our NFTs that have been already generated to our collection. So let's do that. Uh, we'll come back here to our code editor. And we're going to create a new component here. So in here, we'll call our create a new component, create a new file, and we'll call this our NFT collection .tsx. And in our NFT collection here, we're going to have a type of our NFT collection props. And all this is going to have is our NFTs, which is an array of NFTs here. And we can import that type from third web. We're then going to export our NFT collection component. And we're going to create that right here. So I'm going to have some styling here for this div. And in there, we're going to just give it a header here that says AI generations. Below that, we'll give it a div. Give that some styling. And what we'll do is then take the NFTs, the array of NFTs that we have, and we're going to map through them. So all those NFTs that we have, we're going to map through. And for each NFT that we get, we're going to display a div here, which is going to be the NFT. So we'll say here uh, we have our key, which is going to be the NFT.ID. And then we're going to give that div some styling. And all we're going to display is just an image of the NFT. And again, we can use the media renderer component from third web. Uh, and this will take the IPFS hash of the NFT image and display it for us. So we just need to set the client here to the client from our client.ts file and set the source here to the nft.metadata.image. And then we can give some styling here to that image here. And that's all we're going to do here is for our component, provide it the array of NFTs that it needs to display. So coming back to our AI generator.tsx, we're going to add in our NFT collection here. And again, we're going to have to provide it with the NFTs that we are going to then get. So to get our NFTs, we first need to get our contract and the information and the NFTs from that contract. So coming over to our file directory here, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it utils. And in the utils folder, I'm going to create a contracts.ts file. We're going to create a component here called our NFT collection contract address. And that is going to equal our contract address. So let's come over here and get our NFT contract address of our AI NFT generator. We'll copy that. Come in here, paste that in. Now let's get our contract here. So we're going to export a variable here called contract. And we're going to use the get contract here from third web. And we're going to provide it a few things. We're going to provide it the client here, which is going to be our client from our client.ts file. And this is going to be the chain or the chain ID that we deployed our NFT to or our smart contract to. And in here, I'm going to import a predefined chain already from third web. If it's not a predefined chain, you can use the defined chain and provide the chain ID to get your chain. But since the polio here is the chain that we used and it is a predefined chain here, uh, we can just import this from third web slash chains. And then we can use Sepolia here as our chain. And finally, we need to provide it the address, which is going to be our NFT collection address right up here. So that is going to be the contract variable that we can use here. And then that will allow us to start interacting with this contract or the NFT contract that we deployed earlier. So coming back to the AI generator.tsx file, if I come all the way up here. We're going to now get the information from the contract to display our NFTs. 
and we're going to use the use read contract hook from third web and that's going to return us back some data which we'll just call nfts and we'll also have uh, the ability to refetch this data which we're going to use uh, once an image is generated we want to be able to refetch that data of owned nfts again we'll be using the use read contract hook here and we're going to be using something called an extension here and this extension is called get nfts and this extension we can import here from third web and we'll import it from third web slash extensions slash and this is for erc721 here and get NFTs is just going to get all the NFT uh, data and information of the minted NFTs on the smart contract. So here we just need to provide it the contract that it's getting this information for, which is the contract from our contract.ts file. So there we go. We now have NFTs. So now when we come down here to our NFTs, uh, we can now just give it and provide it our NFTs here and we'll save that and then we'll come back to our NFT collection and what we're going to want to make sure is that uh, we have NFTs and that NFTs dot uh, length is greater than zero and if it's not greater than zero we're going to want to just say no NFTs yet. And then our NFT collection if it is possibly undefined we'll just say there and then now if we come back to our application we'll refresh this and there you go you can see we have a prompt we have our ai generations here and it says no nfts yet because again we haven't minted any nfts to our collection so we have the ui and everything here kind of built out already now let's add the functionality and the first functionality that we're going to add is just generating the image using openai's dolly once we have the image generation set, we'll then implement engine to mint the NFT. So we're just going to do the AI image generation here first. And to do that, we're going to come back to our code editor here. We're going to come here and in the source folder, we're going to in the app folder, we're going to create a new folder and call that API. And in that API folder, we're going to create a new folder. We'll call this our generate. And in that generate folder, we'll create a new file here called our route.ts. And in here, we're going to be able to generate our image using OpenAI's Dolly image generator. So first thing we're going to have to do is create our OpenAI instance here. And this is going to create a new OpenAI. We can then import this OpenAI here from OpenAI. And what we're going to have to provide open AI here is our API key. So we're going to say API key and we're going to store this in our environment variable. So we'll say process.emv and we're going to call this our open AI API key. You're going to have to create yourself an open AI API key. So coming to uh, open AI, you'll create an account. You'll go to your dashboard. You'll come down to API keys here. Um, you may have to make sure that you have a balance in your account uh, to pay for the generations. You'll create a new secret key here and then you'll get your API key there that you can then use to generate the images using OpenAI's DALI. So I'm going to take mine here and what we're going to do from there is add this OpenAI API key to your .env file and you're gonna put in your API key right there. So I'm gonna do that now and then come back to our route.ts file here. All right, so I added in my OpenAI API key to my environment variable. Now let's create our image generation here. So we're going to export an async function here, and this is going to be a post function that takes our request, and this is going to be of type next request here. And what we're going to do here is use OpenAI to generate and return us our image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take in our image prompt. And this is going to be from our request body here. So we'll say request.json here. And we'll say if there is no image prompt, then we'll just return a status of 400 saying, hey, please provide an image prompt. Then once we know we have our image prompt, uh, we'll run a try catch here. In the catch, we'll just say, uh, we'll console error our error just in case. And then we'll return a new response here that says error that we failed to generate the image and they'll give us a status of 500. So 
that's if the image generation there fails. But in the try here, what we're going to do here is create a variable here for our response. And this is going to await openai.images.generate. And again, we're going to be generating an image using Dali. So we're going to specify our model here. And the model we are going to specify is going to be Dali. I'm going to say Dali 3. Uh, you can use Dali version 2 if you want to. Uh, the prompt for our image prompt is going to be the image prompt that we got from our request body here. Uh, the number of images we want generated is going to be one. And then the size here. Now, if you are using Dolly 3, the minimum size that you can generate is a 1024 by 1024. So I'm going to use that image size right there. And that is going to generate the image for us. Now, we're going to say here, if there is no response dot data, We'll just throw an error saying that we failed to generate the image. And then finally, uh, we'll return a new response here, which will be json.stringify. And what we're going to return back here is the uh, data, which is going to be our response.data. And then we'll also here say uh, status 200 uh, if it does return us back our image data. So again, this is really simple, our image generation here that we're going to get from OpenAI. Again, we get our instance of OpenAI here. We take our image prompt from our request. Uh, we then use OpenAI to generate that image. Uh, again, we're using Dolly 3 in this tutorial. And then we'll get back that data. And with that data, we'll then be able to display the image in our application. So that's what we're going to do next here. We're going to come back to our AI generator.tsx and we're going to create that function there to generate our image and display our image in our app. So I'm going to create a function here. We're going to say uh, this function is going to be our handle generate and mint, but we're only going to implement the mint right now. And it's going to be an async function and listening to our form event here. And we'll say uh, e dot prevent default here. And what we're going to first do is set the generating image. Oh, sorry, set. And the first thing we're going to do here is set is generating image to true or set is generating to true. And we'll run our try catch here. In the catch here, we'll just console error our error. But in our try here, we're going to get our response. And what we're going to do here is await and fetch our generate API. So we're going to say slash API slash generate. And we're going to provide this our method, which is going to be a post method here. We're then going to supply it our headers, which is content type application JSON. And then the body here is going to be our JSON dot stringify. And we're going to give it our image prompt. So whatever we have within our image prompt here, we're going to provide that in our API request to generate the image and use that prompt to generate the image with Dali. We're going to then check if uh, our response is not OK. We'll throw an error saying that we failed to generate the image. Next, what we're going to do is take that generated image and upload it to IPFS. And when we upload that image to IPFS, we'll then be able to use that IPFS hash to then mint the NFT using engine. We'll also take that IPFS hash and use that to display the image within our app. Now we are going to have to turn the image generated from OpenAI into a file and then upload to IPFS. And the only reason being is that the URL link that OpenAI gives you when you generate an image does have an expiration date on it. So we don't want to use that URL because in time that URL won't exist and then that image will show on your NFT. So what we'll do here is once we get back our response and it's OK, We'll get back a variable, we'll call that data, and this is going to await our response.json. We'll then create an image blob from that data. So we'll just say image blob here, and we're going to await, and then this is going to take our data that we got from our response, the first indexed item within that data, and get the image URL. And then it's gonna just turn that image URL into a image blob here. And then we're going to turn that image blob into a file. So we're going to create a new file, provide it the image blob. We're going to create that file as an image.png of type image png here. 
Now we can then upload that file to IPFS. And with Third Web's Connect SDK, we can actually upload this really easy. Uh, we'll just create a new variable here. We'll call this our image URI. And all we're going to do is await, and we're going to use the upload here from Third Web. And we can import upload here. So we'll say import upload from Third Web slash storage. And for upload here, we just need to provide it here with our client which is going to be our client again from client.ts. And then we provide it an array of the files that we want to upload. And the array is just going to have our file or image file right over here. And in return, this is going to give us our IPFS hash or image URI. Uh, and then we can use that image URI one to mint the NFT. And then two, we can display it now in our app. So we can now set the generated image here to our image URI. And because we're using third Web's media renderer, we can take that IPFS hash of the image URI and display it in our application. And finally, from here, we'll just say uh, set is generating to false. So we're not going to work on the minting part just yet. We'll just test out our image generation right over here. So coming back to my app, let's test this out. So we'll just say uh, here turtle on the beach. Uh, we'll hit generate and mint. And I didn't, and I didn't add my function here to my button. So we're going to take this handle generate and mint here. And then coming down here to our form, we're going to say here on submit, uh, we are going to have this handle our generate and mint. And we'll make sure that on our button here, uh, we have of type submit. So it runs our on submit here on the form. So we'll save that, come back to our app here. Uh, and then we'll test this out here. So we'll say here turtle on the beach. We'll generate our image. You can see here it is generating. Once it generates, it should show our image right in here. So we'll say generating. It should then again upload to IPFS and then we'll get that image back here once it's done. And there you go. You can see our image generation works with OpenAI's Dolly. We have our image here of a turtle on the beach and now our button and prompt disappears and you can see here it says generate another NFT. We can generate one. It resets this and then we can then generate another NFT here. So we know that works. We can generate our image. We can upload it to IPFS, which means we can now use that IPFS or that image URI to now create an NFT. Now we're going to be using ThirdWeb's engine to create these NFTs for us. This is going to take care of the gas and everything. Um, and we're going to go over how to use engine to do this. So first thing we need to do is create a request to mint the NFT using engine. So coming back to my files here under the API folder, I'm going to create a, another folder here and we're going to call this mint. And in the mint folder, we're going to create a new file and call this route.ts. <laughs> and we're going to create our post request to engine to again, mint the NFT. Now to use engine here, we're going to set up some variables and we're going to set this up in our environment variables. So we're going to set up the engine URL, our secret key for engine, or our access token. And then we need a backend wallet and our chain ID that this is going to be interacting with. So let's create our variable here. So let's create our function here. So we're gonna export an async uh, function, which is going to be a post here. And again, we're gonna have a request of type uh, next request. And in here, we're going to first check to make sure that we have all of our environment variables that we need. If not, we'll return a status of 500 here, and then we'll just, then we're going to get uh, the variables here from our request body. And this is going to be our NFT image and the address that we need to send this to. So the NFT image is going to be the image URI that we get from our uploaded AI generated image. And then the address is gonna be the address of the connected wallet. So we're gonna say await. Oh, this is going to equal and await our request.json. And then here we're going to run a try catch. And in the catch here, we'll just same as last time, we'll just console log our error and return a next response of an error message saying fail to mint NFT with a status of 500. And then in the try here, this is where we're going to make our request to engine and get back our response here. So we're going to say const here uh, response is going to equal and we're going to await and we're going to say fetch and we're going to 
get our endpoint here to engine and mint our NFT. So I'm gonna go over engine really quick here. We're gonna come back to our third web dashboard. We're gonna to go to the engine tab right here. Now, if you don't have engine or you don't know what engine is, we have a video linked down in the description below that you can watch. We'll show you how to run your own instance of engine, which is an HTTP server that's gonna allow you to make API requests for on-chain transactions. And you can run this locally completely for free if you wanna try it out and test it. If you do want to get a live instance of engine, you can create an instance here. Uh, we do have a cloud hosted engine that you can use. Uh, it is $99 per month. This is going to give you a completely managed instance of engine. So you always get the updated version of engine. Everything will be managed for you or you can choose to host your own instance of engine if you choose to do so. So you don't have to go through third web here. We just make it really quick and easy for you to get one up and running, but you can feel free to of course, create your own as well. But once you have it here in engine, there are gonna be a few things that we need. Uh, the first is we're gonna look at the endpoints here that we can call. Uh, we're gonna go to the Explorer and we are going to use an ERC721 and we're gonna look for the post request here for a mint two. So right over here, this is our endpoint. Um, we're gonna provide it the chain, the contract address, say that it's an ERC721. And then we are going to mint two. So this is the endpoint here that we need to call. And then you can see here in the body, we just need to provide it the receiver and then the metadata of the NFT, including the IPFS hash that the image is stored at. So coming back to the code editor here, we're going to get that endpoint here. So again, we're going to take our engine URL slash contract slash chain ID. Then we're gonna get our NFT contract address. So if we come back to our contracts here, we're gonna make sure that we export our NFT collection contract address. Come back here, make sure we import that slash ERC721 slash mint two. Then we say, hey, our method is going to be of type post. We're gonna have our headers here, which is going to include the content type which is going to be application slash JSON. We have our authorization, which is going to be the bearer and then our third, third web secret key. And then finally, we need to add the backend wallet here for our engine, which is going to be our backend wallet address. And what that backend is, is in our engine, if we go to overview here, we have our backend wallets and our backend wallets are going to be the wallets that we're making the call to engine two. And this wallet, this backend wallet is the one that is going to execute the transaction on chain for us. So the user on the front end is not gonna to have to pay any gas or anything. Everything's gonna be taken care of and executed using this backend wallet. So you can see here, this is my backend wallet. Now we do need to deposit some funds in here because again, this wallet needs to be the one to execute the transaction. So I can copy that back in wallet. You can create a new back in wallet if you don't already have one. And we're gonna just send some funds over to this back in wallet here. So we're just gonna paste in that wallet address and say zero point, I'll just say two here. And we'll hit next. And then we'll confirm that and send some funds on over to the back end wallet so it can execute those on-chain transactions and mint the NFT for our user. There we go, confirmed. So there you go, now I have 0.2 ETH within this backend wallet here. And that is what we are setting up here. So we're specifying what backend wallet is going to be executing. And then we have our body here. And in the body, we need to provide it a few things. The first thing is going to be the receiver. And again, the receiver is going to be the address that we get in our request body. And then we need to provide it the metadata of the NFT that it is minting. So we need to provide the metadata, which is going to be the name here. Uh, the name will say will be our AI NFT. And then the description of our NFT, we'll just say an AI uh, NFT generated by AI. And then the image of our NFT is going to be our NFT image that we again get from our request body up here. And that is gonna make our call to engine to then mint the NFT. And we can just say if the response is not okay, we can just throw the error saying that we failed to mint the NFT. And then finally here, we're going to return a new next response. And we'll return a json.stringify with a message here that just says NFT was minted successfully. 
Again, that's going to be our post request here to mint the NFT using ThirdWeb's engine. Now we're gonna to have to set up the environment variables for engine to work. We need the engine URL, which is going to be the URL of your instance of engine. So if you are deploying this and running it locally, it'll just be the local host that you have it deployed to. Uh, the third web secret key is gonna be your engine access token. So over here, your access token, you can create an access token and that is your access token to allow the API to access your engine. And then you, again, you have your backend wallet. So you need to copy that backend wallet address. And then we need to provide it the chain ID of the chain that you deployed your smart contract to. So I'm going to set up these variables here in my environment variable, my .env file, and then we'll come right back. All right. So I have my environment variables set up for engine. Now let's implement the minting of the NFT into our function that we created earlier. So coming back to the AI generator.tsx file, let's add to our handle generate and mint function here. And after we uh, have generated the image and uploaded it and got the image URI and set that as our image, we set the is generating here to false. We'll then set is minting to true. And what we'll do here is we'll create our mint response which we are then going to await and fetch our slash API slash mint method is going to be post headers is going to be content type application slash JSON. Our body here is we're going to provide it with the image and the wallet address. So the NFT image here is going to be our image URI that we just generated right up here. The address is going to be our account dot address. And again, this is getting it from the account variable that we got from using the use active account hook here. And once we get back our response, we'll check, Hey, if the mint response is not okay, we'll say we failed to mint. And then finally down here, we'll just say alert that the NFT mint was successful. After the catch here, we'll say, finally, uh, we'll make sure that we set is minting to false and uh, that we set is generating to false as well. And we'll refetch the information of the NFT from our NFT collection. We'll also set the image prompt to a blank string here too. So we reset all of our state variables here, and then we refetch the data of our NFT collection that we were getting here so that it updates and populates the NFTs. And there you go. We now have the ability to generate the image and mint it all using OpenAI's Dolly and ThirdWeb's engine. Now, one thing before we start generating images here is we need to set up our contract. So coming back to our AI NFT generator contract or the contract that you deployed, we're going to come over to the permissions tab here. And under the permission tab, we need to give permission to the minter and creator by default, it is the wallet address that you deploy the contract with, but we also need to give the ability to mint and create new NFTs to our engine's backend wallet. So coming to our engine here, we want to come to the backend wallet that we have the funds and everything for. We want to copy that wallet address and we want to come over to our permissions of our smart contract and add that wallet address in, hit add, and then we'll come down here and update our permissions. If you don't update that permissions, uh, your backend wallet's not going to be able to mint the NFT and then you're going to run into an error. So you want to make sure that backend wallet has the permission to mint and create new NFTs to that smart contract. Cool. Once that is done, we are now set to test this out. So right over here, let's restart this. Let's come back to our main screen here. We have our NFT, our AI NFT generator. We can connect any wallet here that we want. Let's just connect our MetaMask wallet. We have an empty image here. We have our prompt. So let's then again say turtle on the beach and we'll say generate and mint. So again, it should generate us this image using OpenAI's Dolly. It should then display us the image once the image is generated, upload that to IPFS, then make the call to engine to then mint an NFT using that image URI that we just got from uploading the AI generated image. So there we go. We can see our image is generated. It is minting. And then we go, we got mint, uh, NFT minted successful. If we hit okay, you can see it says generate another NFT. We can take a look at our contract here. So we have our AI uh, NFT generator contract. If we come to our NFTs here, 
We'll give it a moment for it to upload. Uh, maybe just needs a little refresh here. There you go. We have our token ID one. So the same image that we just generated right over here. We have our AI NFT and our AI generated NFT. So we can come back to our app here. Uh, you can see we have our AI generated AI generations down here, which is that one NFT that we created. Uh, we can do this again. So maybe this time we want to say uh, robot eating sushi. Uh, we can generate and mint. It's going to generate. Uh, once that generation comes, we'll toggle on over to our engine here so you can see the minting. So once that generates, so there you go, it's generated. If we come here, you'll see our mint coming through in a little bit. There you go. Sepolia queued up. That's the call that it made to engine. It's now engine is now sending this transaction, getting it mined, minting the NFT for us. And there you go. It's been mined and minted. So coming back here, we'll come back to our collection. And then we have our second image, which is that image that was just generated for us right over here. So back over here, we got our alert saying NFT is minted successfully. And then we can just generate another image and our prompt gets reset over here. And then down here at the bottom, we get our image uh, that gets added to our image generations. And there you go. We built ourselves an AI NFT image generator where we'll be able to use OpenAI's Dolly 3 to generate AI images. And then once the image is generated, we then make the call using ThirdWeb's engine to create an on-chain transaction to mint that image as an NFT and send it to the connected user's wallet address. So again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. If you need any help or support, we'll drop a link down in the description below where you can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of the questions you have. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.